We're now going to finish this chapter by teaching you about formal charges. For some molecules, we can draw more than one Lewis structure that gives all of the atoms a full octet. When this happens, we can think of the actual molecule as being a blend of all of these contributing Lewis structures. For example, we can draw two structures for CO2, carbon dioxide, that both have a full octet on every atom, as we see here. The question is then, which one is right? As it turns out, both of them are. In reality, CO2 structure is somewhere in between these two structures. We say then that these two structures are both contributors to the actual structure of CO2. However, the more stable of these two structures is the one that contributes more. So how do we know which Lewis structure contributes more or is the most stable? Well, let me tell you. Chemists have created a bookkeeping system for doing this. We assign numbers called formal charges to each atom in the molecule. The Lewis structure that contributes most, that is, that's the most stable, is, generally speaking, the structure in which all of the atoms have formal charges that are closest to zero. Now, for Lewis structures that have charged atoms, the more stable structure will be the one that gives negative formal charges to the most electronegative atoms. So you might be wondering now, how do we calculate formal charges? <laughs> well, the formal charge of any atom in a molecule is the charge the atom would have if all of the atoms in the molecule were equally electronegative. This is calculated by using the following equation. Formal charge equals the number of valence electrons in that atom minus the number of electrons assigned to the atom. Now I know you might be wondering, what in the world does the number of electrons assigned to the atom mean? Well, I'll show you that right now. All lone pair electrons are assigned to the atom on which they're found. And for any bond, either a single, double, or a triple, half of the electrons in that bond are assigned to each atom sharing that bond. Now I'll show you how to do that now with a couple of examples. I want you to assign formal charges to each atom in the following ions. Now, if you want to, you're welcome to pause the video and attempt this on your own, as I'm going to show you the answers to both of these right now. In order to calculate the formal charges for each atom in our first example, Cn minus, we have to, of course, remember the formula I showed you on the previous slide. That formal charge equals the number of valence electrons in each atom minus the number of electrons that are assigned to the atom. In order to do this, we first of all have to draw the Lewis structure for Cn minus. Having taught you guys this in class earlier, you should be able to determine that the Lewis structure for Cn minus looks like this. So what are the formal charges for each of the atoms in Cn minus? Well, for carbon, I'm going to, of course, assign it a formal charge that's equal to the number of valence electrons minus the number of electrons assigned to it. What is that number? Remember, the number of electrons assigned to it is the sum of all of the lone pair electrons on carbon plus one electron for each bond that carbon is experiencing. You'll note from the periodic table that carbon has four valence electrons. You'll also note from this Lewis structure that this particular carbon atom has two lone pair electrons. That's where I get this number two here. It also has three bonds. And we only give it one electron from each of these bonds, arriving at a number three. So the overall formal charge of carbon is four minus the sum of two plus three, which is negative one. For nitrogen, we go through the same process. Valence electrons minus the sum of all the lone pairs on that nitrogen atom, plus one for each bond that it's experiencing. Nitrogen has, of course, five valence electrons. This particular nitrogen atom has two lone pair electrons, which is where I get this two from, and three bonds. Keeping in mind that each bond actually represents two electrons, one of those two electrons in each of those bonds belong to this nitrogen giving me a total number of three. So the overall formal charge on this nitrogen is five minus the sum of two plus three, which equals zero. Here's our second example, SO4 two minus, which is the sulfate anion. You should note, having applied the skills I've taught you from earlier in this chapter, that one Lewis structure you can draw for sulfate looks like this. 
To calculate the formal charge on each atom in the sulfate, we need to remember, of course, our formula, that formal charge is equal to the number of valence electrons for each atom minus the number of electrons that each atom has assigned to it. For sulfur, that formal charge is going to be equal to the number of valence electrons in sulfur minus the sum of every lone pair electron it has on it plus one for each bond it's experiencing. You'll notice looking at the periodic table that sulfur has six valence electrons. This particular sulfur has no lone pair electrons next to it. That is, no dots next to it. So that gives me a zero right here. This sulfur atom is also experiencing four single bonds, and it gets one for each of those. Thus, the total formal charge for this sulfur is six minus the sum of zero plus four, which equals plus two. For each oxygen atom, you'll note that the number of valence electrons oxygen has is six. You'll also note that each oxygen has six total lone pair electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, around it. That's where I get this six from. And each oxygen is also experiencing one bond. Thus, each oxygen's formal charge in this structure is six minus the sum of six plus one, which is negative one. Now, some of you might have noticed that there's a different Lewis structure that I can come up with for sulfate, and it is this one. You'll also note that this sulfur atom in this Lewis structure has more than an octet. Because sulfur is in row three of the periodic table or below, that actually can happen. To calculate the formal charges for each atom in this Lewis structure, I need to, of course, use my formula. For sulfur in this Lewis structure, the number of valence electrons is six. The number of lone pair electrons it has is, of course, zero. There are no dots around the sulfur. And it is experiencing six bonds, which is where I get the number six right here. Thus, the overall formal charge for sulfur in this Lewis structure is equal to zero. For oxygen atoms here, there are actually two different kinds of oxygen atoms. The ones shown here at left and at right, and the ones shown top and bottom. For the oxygen atoms that are at the left and the right, each of them has, of course, six valence electrons. Each of these left-right oxygens also has six lone pair electrons, which is where I get this number six here, and one bond, which is where I get this one here. Thus, for the left-right oxygens, the total formal charge is negative one. Now, what about for the top and bottom oxygens? Well, of course, each top and bottom oxygen has six valence electrons. You also notice that each of them has four total lone pair electrons, one, two, three, four. And each one is experiencing two bonds. Thus, the overall formal charge for each of the top and bottom oxygens is six minus the sum of four plus two, which is zero. You'll notice comparing the formal charges for this Lewis structure versus the Lewis structure shown on the previous slide, that this one gives us more numbers that are closer to zero. Thus, this is actually the greater contributor between the two and is the more stable Lewis structure. Questions? Good. Let's go on looking at this problem. Which of the following proposed structures for carbon dioxide is the greatest contributor? Now, I'm not going to do this one for you, but we'll let you do it on your own following the steps that I delineated in the previous examples. I want to end with this. Question number one from our problem set. Complete each Lewis structure below by adding electron pairs we're missing and indicate the formal charge of each nitrogen atom. Now, in our former lecture in class, I showed you how to place the missing lone pairs onto these atoms. I'm not going to explain that now, but we'll just show you where those all belong, but only for the compound at left. I'll let you figure out the compound to the right on your own. Now, in order to calculate the formal charge of the nitrogen on the compound on the left, I once again use my formula. The number of valence electrons nitrogen has minus the sum of all the lone pair electrons on it plus one for each bond it's experiencing. Nitrogen, of course, has five valence electrons. This particular nitrogen has two lone pair electrons, which is where I get this two here, and it's experiencing three total bonds, which is where I get this three here. Thus, for this nitrogen, its overall formal charge is five minus the sum of two plus three, which equals zero. Now, I'm not going to tell you the formal charge of the nitrogen in the compound here at the right, but we'll let you determine that on your own. This brings us to the end of our 
Chapter 8 Lectures, which I hope you've enjoyed. I want you all to have a happy Halloween, and I look forward to seeing you guys in class next week. Until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.